Olá pessoal, tudo bem com vocês? Eu espero que sim. Bom, está chovendo bastante, mas tem um motivo especial para eu estar aqui falando com vocês na chuva. E o motivo é que a água faz a gente funcionar, que a vida toda emerge da água. Nós vamos entender nesse vídeo fantástico do Nassim Ramen como o universo faz surgir a biologia e como o espaço-tempo, através da biologia, traz nós a consciência. E como o universo faz para construir o nosso mundo biológico através da água. E nós vamos entender um pouquinho mais por que toda a vida emerge da água. Vamos entender como que os minerais são pequenas antenas do vácuo que trabalham dentro das nossas células e que a atividade dentro das nossas células são muito grandes e muito energéticas. Ao contrário do que a gente imagina, que é um mundo lento e sem muita complexidade. Esse é apenas alguns dos assuntos muito interessantes que o físico Nassim Ramen vai falar pra gente. Eu espero que você goste bastante. Vamos ver! On the scaling law, what's what appears to be kind of centered on the scaling law be between universal size and the Planck size is um, an energy level uh, oscillator that we call the microtubule. So it, it's it's um, it's a, it's it's one of the fundamental building block of biological structures uh, that has to do with the the skeleton of cells and the, how they build. And these little tubes are quite fantastic. They they actually have water molecules in there, and the the they have energy levels that are very very high. I mean, and that's one of the things is that we because of our scale and the way from our scale that we observe the the natural world, we always think of biology as this kind of slow, messy thing that you know kind of blobs around you know um but actually when you get to the minute size of the biology the the components that put the biology together they're very high energy you know you're talking you know um coherent photonic emission lasing you're talking little plasma vortex inside of microtubule like I mean, it's it's high energy stuff, and um, and you know William Brown and I are, and and Dr. Miraval Baker are, are writing papers actually on this right now, um, showing that the 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 structure of space time like these are just like antennas in space time. So you can imagine, you know, to answer your question more clearly. Um, That's, you know, that's the question we're attempting to answer in those papers. What is life or what is consciousness and so on? And, and, and basically we're saying, actually, we just see a, um, an expression of life um, at a certain scale. But actually, life is present at all the scales, you know, that like, because basically we're just like a sack of mostly water with a bunch of minerals in it. And, you know, we're able to like move around and do things uh, because we are in communication with this field of information. And so that life is present at all like levels. It's just that it, it, It gets more and more complex as it gets further and further down the feedback, and then it reaches levels of complexity where all of a sudden it has mobility, it has capacity to communicate, it's experiencing its environment and reflecting on it, and it's able to crush more and more data, and then we call it, you know, being conscious. Or, or we call it an animal or a tree and so on. And so, you know, basically, um, it's really important to see it as a continuous evolution from the structure of space-time through the wormhole, black hole nature of the proton, 
mineral structures, and then eventually, you know, which is a higher complexity, like down the table environment, and then into like biological structures, like which is basically the minerals um, feeding back information so that they can self-organize in higher level of complexity. Water molecule being the main ingredient um, and uh, in interaction with the minerals, modulating the, mo the mineral. And that's really exciting. Like two weeks ago, there was a paper published at the Academy of Science showing that they are now able to prove, and this is something I've been saying for a long time, I'm so glad they're able to show it now, um, that actually it's the water molecules that are modulating the amino acid and the, uh, you know, the protein that makes the DNA old. So that actually the chemical changes that are happening in the body and all this stuff that, that makes the DNA take various relationships so that it encodes differently is actually the water that's making that happen. Not, you know, and not just the DNA on its own, which is constantly what's been studied instead of the water that packs the DNA. Um, where if you remove the water, nothing happens. I mean, there's a reason why life comes out of water, right? And it's the main ingredient that's actually modulating the minerals to eventually, so, the, so it's the conduit of the information through the structure of space time that actually modulate the minerals just right so that all of a sudden they're able to agglomerate and create structures that are able to talk with each other and all this, all directed by the water uh, structure. Um, and this is why the brain is 90 some percent water. The gray matter is actually very little of what's up there. And some people are actually born with very little gray matter. And um, that doesn't seem to affect them. Like they still function absolutely normally. And that should be a clue <laughs> that, uh, that it's the water that's doing the thing. So, so now they're able to observe that. So that's really exciting. interessante, não é mesmo? E eu tenho uma recomendação muito legal para fazer para você, que você vai entender a relação da forma da molécula da água com a geometria do vácuo. O que tem em comum a água e a geometria fundamental do universo do vácuo, que é do feedback e que cria a nossa realidade, para entender um pouco mais como a água, como a vida emerge da água. Eu espero que você tenha gostado do vídeo de hoje. A gente se vê no próximo. Um grande abraço e até mais!